Well, you need an operating system to use a browser. What if I tell you that you can use a browser to run an operating system? Well, that's exactly what you're seeing on the screen today where I'm running a Linux compute inside of my browser. This is like a full computer and this is running locally. Now, granted that there are bugs and things in this, I don't even know like why this one is appearing, but <laughs> this is like a real system which is there inside of the computer inside of the browser itself right so you can see that i'm able to write commands inside document i'm able to like you know open nano for example fermion.txt and nano is not there so if i do an app install of nano so i can make make these things work like if you just study a little bit but the but the bigger thing is that this whole system is a real linux computer running inside the browser itself right so you see this this is very very like i mean it's not obviously like very fast but it works at least it starts to work i don't know like how this loopy game works but it's also like one of the games which is there you also have minesweeper or at least a version of that which you can play inside this and this is like it's not like built in html css and javascript it's not that thing which is going on over here it's actual web assembly what, what is happening over here so if you try to open an inspector over here you see this right here is a canvas nothing over here is an html css or javascript what you are seeing is 100 percent you know canvas technology which is drawn obviously it's drawn with javascript but the pixels or the computer like what needs to be displayed it's coming directly from web assembly so this project is known as web vm and web vm 2.0 has released which is a complete linux desktop environment in the browser via WebAssembly. I'm going to review this blog post a little bit and I'm going to review, I mean, I already used this, so I know like it sort of works, it's slow, it's laggy, and it's obviously it can't be your primary computer, but it's a good first starting point in the next say 10 years of time, right? So how does this work? How is this happening? Like what is going on over here? What are all of these things over here? So there are essentially, like they say, that there are essentially four building components for WebVM. First one is the Chirp X virtualization engine. I'm not sure how exactly you pronounce this. Is it Chirp X or is it something else? But there is a virtualization engine, a virtual storage backend, a networking layer, and the graphical device, which is pretty much more or less what you need in order to create a computer, right, inside browser. You need an engine that can understand binary or opcode of your operating system, what it's trying to do. Then you need graphics, then you need storage, and then you need to display all of that, right? Uh, networking also. So Cheapex is a unique WebAssembly-based virtualization engine for x86 binary code. This engine is based on an efficient just-in-time compiler from x86 instructions into WebAssembly, plus an emulation layer for Linux syscalls. This this combination makes it possible to run unmodified Linux x86 binaries in browser and it's robust and scalable enough to run the whole Linux distributions. Now emulation is something we talked about a little in my last week's video on how you are able to run Windows inside a Docker container where we also discussed about quick emulator if you don't know about this. It's also one way to emulate system right inside the software and I mean it can work with KVM and things like that which can provide hardware acceleration but it also supports full system emulation on the software layer alone so you can run quick emulator just like that like you are running probably web vm but the performance i'm assuming is significantly worse for this because WebAssembly is known for its bad performance compared to native code right even though it like can support native code and it's like c c plus plus all of that but it still has to operate within the sandbox constraints of the browser so anyway that is the first thing which they are building i'm assuming something like quick emulator but inside of browser inside of WebAssembly. the second main component of the web vm is that it's streaming disk backend okay so one of the key benchmarks of a successful web vm is to be able to boot full unmodified linux without requiring preload of the full file system this implies the ability to support 1 gb plus root file systems and to dynamically load disk blocks with low latency a critical concern for overall performance of vm okay so this is something i probably don't fully understand because I've not looked deep into the project, but is it like storing the disk remotely in the cloud somewhere? I'm assuming that is the case. Otherwise, why would you have a web socket in this diagram if you're just talking to the local file system in general? I mean, you can still have web socket, but uh, it seems like it's not the case. But anyway, we'll get to that. Finally, the picture is completed by private networking layer implemented via Tailscale and XORP support using the KMS Linux API. More on these in the later section. So I, I want to see, like I close the window over here, but uh, 
if we open this again, the Alpine Linux environment, which they have, I want to see how they are performing network request in an environment like this. So you can see right now there are no network request assets. So everything is most likely like, you know, running locally. So this WebAssembly one binary, one thing has been downloaded and it's just trying to execute. It's very slow as expected. You can see like, I don't know what this virtual CPU usage is, but it it's it takes a long time to boot, right? And even then when it boots, the cursor is not exactly how you would expect it on a normal machine. But anyway, by the time this boots moving forward. So let's talk about their secure x86 virtualization in WebAssembly. The Cheatpex is an x86 virtualization engine in Vasm designed to be robust, scalable and performant. Since this is implemented exclusively using standard JavaScript and WebAssembly and browser APIs, it's also extremely secure. I mean, that goes without saying, like anything you're running in Chromium or Chrome in general is pretty airtight. I mean, even if it has some vulnerabilities, it would be fixed on day of zero by the these teams because these are some of the most used environments right in the world everyone uses browsers and everyone visits millions of websites on a daily basis so it can be used like any other javascript library either from cdn or using the npm although the idea of running arbitrary binaries in the browser might sound worrying cheerpex operates within the browser sandbox and completely isolates the virtualized binary applications from your local environment access to files, networking, and any other interaction between applications and the system are virtualized and implemented using standard web APS, which is pretty much expected. If you are running it inside of a website, there is no chance that this just escapes and just starts running some arbitrary code until and unless you are downloading some extension or you know, you're doing something to break out of the browser's default security model, right? So I'm trying to see how much time it takes to boot and it still hasn't booted. I've given it a refresh. So let's see if it boots again or not. But anyway, Anyway, moving forward with the low latency disk backend and private local storage. So what they're saying is that one of the ambitions of WebVM, this project is to be scalable enough to support large unmodified Linux distributions with good performance on arbitrary workloads. Working with large disk images was one of the main challenges we faced in the development of WebVM. The most common solution when trying to solve similar problems is to prefetch the subset of disk known to be useful for specific demo ahead of time. Okay, so I think I'm understanding when they said like we want to stream the disk, this might be the actual operating system itself. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure, but maybe they are not downloading the full operating system file which is required right so over here maybe it's not the full file which is required but anyway what I want to do over here is go to apps and open terminal first of all and over here I want to just do some things right I want to run a network request just to see how this appears to be so let's say if I do a curl of fermion.app you might not be able to see it it's just very small and curl is not installed so let's just try wget and wget is installed but let's see what's happening so it says me bad address for formion.app, okay? So it's not able to perform any network request because see, anything you want to do over here has to go through browsers infrastructure, right? You can't just bypass browser and make a network request without it getting appeared in the network tab. So it's not able to make that request. I just don't know how to enable network request over here. It can connect to the internet via tail scale. Using tail scale is required since browser does not support TCP and UDP sockets yet. So if I connect to tail scale, let's see what happens. Okay, so I did connect to tail scale. And if I try to run this request now, so I went through this documentation a bit, how networking with cheap X work. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to use something known as tail scale, which uses web sockets as a proxy to connect to internet, right? So to overcome these limitations with our like classic limitations with HTTP and HTTPS, for example, if you're just, you know, doing something like this over, you know, if you try to convert this into a real fetch request if you try to do that it would be sort of bad because of the course and you know the limited set of things you can do and so on and so forth so you need some sort of vpn or some sort of web socket which just transmit the traffic directly to internet and just gets you back responses also that's why they just did not go ahead and support fetch at all with with this web vm and they just went with tail scale from the day one. So to give you access to your local or development machine as part of Tailscale internal network, you will need to install Tailscale locally. So you can also install this locally, but I'm not gonna do like a lot of networking right now and 
you know set all these things up you can try to do that if you want but it's it's an interesting strategy because see once you create something like this you have effectively unblocked yourself on the network layer or the network restrictions of the browser but that also means that this now is not exactly a fully local system right because now let's say if you are somebody who wants to create some sort of educational resource or something let's say that you're trying to create something like code daemon for or fermion so what happens let me give you a real example of what happens here so let's say i go to one of these websites that are using fermion as a platform right so if you go to fermion you can also try and see like how you can create your own platform for technical content if you're selling any sort of coding or things which involve programming in general you can have these ide interfaces right so if I go ahead and show you how this looks from a real browsers or a real products perspective, I think you'll be able to understand a bit better. So let's say I want to have a coding environment within browser, right? So let's say this is one of the coding environments which I want to have within the browser. So it's a solidity lab. I just want to spin it up and start working real quick. So you see an environment like this spins up within a few seconds, right? It's ready to go. You can start coding here. You have a terminal over here, which is pretty similar to what you are seeing over here also. But I mean, it's obviously not exactly same because you have like a GUI over here. Over here, the GUI itself is the browser, right? But the networking stack over here is a real computer, right? So there is no simulation or emulation going on in the browser itself. You can see that this is like a real command which is running on a real server and it got you the real output back. Over here, because this is running inside your browser itself, you still need a third party server or an integration like Tailscale, for example, in order to communicate with the internet, right? So that is number one. Number two is that if you are running it on a real machine, obviously connected with some sort of way to the browser, it's always going to be faster because there is no simulation or emulation layer which is skipped right so you are not emulating anything which you are doing over here but nonetheless this is an interesting concept for just for things like you know if you just want to run quickly something offline and you don't want to set up tail scale or third party server or something like that you can still run this without having you know maybe you just want to play a game a cube game you know and you are okay for it to take like 10 seconds to start up but once it starts up you are willing to play along right so so yeah it's it's, it's interesting in that way so yeah that's pretty much it for this it's available on npm and on github also but the license i'm not so sure how permissive the license is it's clearly not mit so you can't just go ahead and start using it in your commercial projects if you want but i think it's 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 a good enough hacking project that you can you know just try around and see how things could work right pretty cool initiative 100 percent that so make sure you check it out on your own time if you want to learn more about this i'll leave all the links in the description but make sure you let me know in the comments what do you think about something like this if you like this or not let me know in the comments below that's all for this one make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel i will see you in the next video very soon